Well, hello, and welcome again to Tale Three Cabins. I got to tell you, I'm a little jealous of a lot of you out there on the forums and um, video pages that are posting pictures of your snow blowing and snow pushing and using your plows. And there's no secret here in northern Ohio, we've been short on snow for most of the winter. Uh, we're a big deficit. When we did have snow, it's been in small increments, not worth plowing. So I'm kind of chopping at the bit to use my plow, but in the meantime, I'll wait. I'm sure we got snow coming and maybe this video will jinx me and we'll get snow with a vengeance. So, but today I'm gonna work on uh, another little project. I'm gonna put this on. My ROPs. So if you watched my videos before, you might have seen almost a year ago where I made these lights for my ROPs, and I do use them, but I'm looking to make them something a little bit more permanent, and I think I'm still going to go with the magnets, but I want it to be built into the switch on the tractor. I don't want to have to plug into the cord, and come check it out. Okay, so I went with this. It's a little light bar. It's 12 inches long. It has spots on the sides and then a flood in the center. And I'm going to connect it. I purchased some wire here, which is made to be an extension for like a trickle charger. But what I'm gonna do is cut one end off, attach that to the lights, and then I'm gonna use it as a plug. So it's got the weather plugs on here. And that way, if I need to remove the lights, if I'm working in the woods or something, I can just unplug it, pick it up with the magnet. But for the most part, I'm gonna to try to leave it attached. So let's see how this goes. So from the reading and research I've done, there's a spare set of wires for external lighting. And while I have the back go off and when I was doing my oil change, I thought this would be a good time to look for them and install these lights. So they're right here. They kind of had a, a small zip tie and they're not really in there that good. Now there's a black and a purple and I'm gonna double check I'm assuming the black is a negative, but I know that with the LED lights that they have circuit boards in there, which you do have to make sure you have your negative and positive correctly. And condensing lights, not so much. So um, let's, I'm gonna test that out first. All right, all I have to do is pull those caps off and it'll expose the contacts. And first I'm just gonna check the voltage, turn the switch on, and I'm just under 12 volts. It's showing 11 and a half volts right there. And then I'm going to check for continuity. I'm just going to ground it, taking the black wire, which I believe is the negative, and just taking it to ground. And it appears that I have conduction between the two. So that is the negative. And just to double check before I get too involved, I'm just going to hook this up and test the light out. Okay. So I mentioned earlier that these wires are used for extending a trickle charger and it's going to come in handy. It's got the little weather caps on there. So if I do take the light off and remove it, I can put the caps on. Now I trimmed one end. I gave myself about a foot of line and I'm going to have, of course, that plug at the other end and then this end is going to go into the light. I'm just using butt connectors on here. I have some shrink tubing on there that I'm going to use once I get them on there and then I'm gonna wrap it up in electrical tape just to be on the safe side. So at the top of my rops, there's a hole pre-drilled there and I'm gonna use that to fish the wire into. I'm using a little bit thicker gauge wire because I thought it'd be easier to fish through and I'm going to fish it over to where the hinged part of the ROPS is.
Now, in all honesty, it only took me two tries to get it there. And then it was a little bit more difficult to get it down the main part because there is some wiring. There's some bolts going through to hold on the flashers and the brake lights. I'm just putting a little electrical tape over here because the hole is sharp that it comes out with and I'm going to feed that back in there to kind of protect it. And then I'm just putting a zip tie on here just to keep it from moving. So fishing this down to the bottom part of the rops did not go that bad. I kind of kept it to the back of the rops and it seemed to be the clearest path. Um, you're not going to see it pop out. The frame is kind of blocking the bottom and there's also some other wires coming out of there. So I definitely could feel it in there and I needed to grab some needle nose players to get it out. Now I did see a tractor time with Tim video not that long ago and he was putting uh, auxiliary lights or something with a, a cab that he was putting on his tractor and he said he only had the wires on the one side but I also have another set on the right side so if I wanted to add another light um, the wires are there. Just have to back up a little bit here so I got some more room to work to not interfere with my ceiling. So I've used these magnets before, they're from Harbor Freight, and I forget what, they're around $6 a piece, $5 a piece, probably cheaper with a coupon. They're rated to hold 95 pounds, that's definitely uh, overkill for this light. When I used them on my other LED lights, um, they worked perfectly. They didn't budge, they didn't vibrate off, they didn't move, um, they held on there really good. So the way I'm putting these on is I'm going right, there's a bolt built into the light and I'm just going to use that. When I did it with the smaller lights, I actually had to trim the bolts so um, they would fit inside the magnet. I had to cut maybe about a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch of the bolt off, the threads. But I didn't have to do it in this case. So the last thing I'm going to do is put some wire wrap protectors on here. I'm going to put some down by the bottom of the rops and then I'm going to put some by the um, hinge of the rops just to protect it from vibrations or sharp areas or wearing. My last connection here I'm just using the bullet connectors that's the same connector as on the tractor and I got a little bit of shrink, shrink tubing on there also. Just one last check to make sure that when I'm using a three-point hitch, it's not going to interfere with that. So I hooked up my little accessory splitter, and with no lights on, I'm getting 4.2, 4.3 volts. And if I turn everything on, the work lights, the... Uh, even the small accessory lights that I have and then the main light bar plus your headlights. I'm only drawing about 4.4 volts. Here's a quick look at them at night. Okay, that's what I did. It's convenient for me. I have a unique situation. I have the low garage here. A lot of times I'm in the woods, so um, I can remove that easily. I don't have to put clamps on. I didn't have to drill any holes. 
and it's on there pretty tight. So I appreciate everybody watching. Hope you enjoy these videos and keep an eye on this. Oh, is there snow coming? Hang on. Nope. False alarm. All right, I'll keep waiting.